Welcome. I was asked by a visitor to the website concerning a comparison between current flow and transistors and their characteristics where I got the chart that I, or graphic that I used in another video. It came from this application note from Toshiba Semiconductor. I uploaded a copy of this to my website at the address you see here bristolwatch.com slash ele3 forward slash toshiba.pdf what I'm going to do is walk through a few highlights on this application note and you can download the entire application application note from my website Toshiba should be noted is one of the world's premier manufacturers of semiconductors including IGBTs. Alright, an insulated gate bipolar transistor or IGBT is a device that combines the MOSFET's advantages of high input impedance and switching speed. As the note says here, the switching speed is not as great as MOSFETs with a bipolar transistor's advantage of conductivity characteristics, that is low saturation voltage. Like MOSFETs and bipolar transistors, the IGB, IGBT is also used as an electronic switch. Here is just an example of the actually very complex internal structure of an IGBT. You, you, I'll have a, this has a better illustration of this further down, but let's look at what we really have here. We have a PNP transistor whose emitter becomes the collector. And of course we establish a emitter base current through a MOSFET connected basically on the other side to the emitter. The important part of it is this. MOSFETs do exhibit a fair amount of resistance and you've got current going through the emitter collector circuit plus you have current moving through the um, MOSFET itself. What we have here as the current continues to climb you have what is called a parasitic transistor and there is a resistive substrate in the system as the current climbs the voltage drop across the base emitter of the parasitic transistor increases. So as the current goes up, more current is shunted around the MOSFET and through the parasitic transistor. I'll go on into more of that in another video. Here is your symbol for an IGBT. Here is the graphic that I used in my other video on MOSFETs and electron flow. We are comparing bipolar transistors with insulated gate bipolar transistors and power MOSFETs. I'll cover now the differences between the three. Bipolar transistor, this represents an NPN transistor, a current between the base and emitter will produce time will produce a correspondingly greater current from emitter to collector. In this case that is called HFE or DC current gain. Alright, bipolar transistors use both electron and hold fl hole flow. It is a current operated device. Current capability is fair. On state voltage is fair but operation frequency tends to be low. In an insulated gate bipolar transistor, it combines, as it said before, characteristics of a MOSFET, particularly as a high impedance input. It, ten it, has, it, runs, it operates by electron and hole flow but the vast majority of carriers are electrons. The emitter, of course, is negative. Most of the charged carriers go to the positively charged collector. As I said again, it's, it's voltage operated, has good current capability, good 
on-state voltage capabilities and a fair frequency of approximately 20 kilohertz. Now we come to the power MOSFET. In this case, this is an in-channel device. A positive charge relative to the source will generate, of course, an N-type region where charge carriers, in this case exclusively electrons, move from a negative source to a positive drain. Okay, the car carriers are exclusively electron flow. This is a voltage-operated device, but its current capabilities are poor. On-state voltage is poor, but the frequency response is excellent, far superior to, the, to IGBTs or bipolar transistors. As you should note, there are two basic structures for IGBTs. One is called the planar gate structure, and the other one is called the trench gate structure. You can read the application note from Toshiba, and it will explain their differences. One, they serve different purposes. Both are good, but they are designed for different uses. Again, here is another example of the complex doping and constructions on various forms of IGBTs. Um, not as simple as I used to think they were, and the newer technology is getting better and better all the time. All right, this is an illustration and explanation of how they add internal diodes to an IGBT. I have never seen an IGBT that doesn't have an internal diode. Okay, I'll close this out with a sample application of an IGBT. This is basically the power system of a microwave oven. You um, change your AC to filter DC then you put in a high frequency square wave to the input of an IGBT acting as a switch. The advantage of doing things such as this, and you'll see more and more of that in the coming years, is these transformers at running at 60 hertz are heavy, expensive. It is probably the most expensive item in a microwave oven. Transformers are expensive. They use a lot of copper or have a lot of weight or really take a lot to manufacture. When you could reduce something, reduce this to something perhaps that fits in the palm of your hand and can operate a 1,000 watt microwave oven and, and even with all the extra components is still cheaper than the microwave. Thus, you have your advantage is when this is switching on and off, there is a low saturation voltage, maybe one or two volts, and most of the voltage and power is delivered into the transformer itself. All right, so that ends this brief view of the Toshiba IGBT spec sheet. I uh, hope it was useful. If you would, hit the like button and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thank you a lot.